Hello, and welcome to Festool TV. My name is Frank. In this episode, we'll be discussing the small OF1010 router. I've got a simple example here. We'll be routing a groove through this board. With this demonstration, I'll show you the best way of working with the OF1010 in more detail. I'll also show you what accessories can be used and give you a few tips and tricks. First of all, I need to install a cutter. You may recognize these nice router bit boxes, which contain various routers with 8mm shanks. I'll go for the conventional groove cutter. It's got an 18mm diameter and a useful length of approximately 30mm. I'll install that now. People often ask how far the cutter needs to be fitted into the collet. For this reason, Festool products have small markings, which allow users to clearly see how far the cutter needs to be installed. If the marking is no longer visible in the course of the cutter's service life, you can say very roughly that two-thirds of the shank length should be firmly fitted in the collet. Use the spindle lock to lock the collet and then tighten it with your fingers. I'll get the remaining torque with my open-ended spanner. Don't tighten it too much, just tighten it in a controlled way. The cutter will then fit and be firmly secured. Just a little tip for removing the cutter later on. We'll be using the spindle lock again. When positioning the key, I must overcome two resistors to remove the cutter. This is because the collet fits very tightly in the holder. The union nut is designed in such a way that it will pull the collet out. If I loosen the first resistor, I won't be able to remove the cutter. To remove the cutter, I therefore need to also overcome the second resistor, so that the union nut is loosened further. If you have a market competitor's cutter, with a diameter of only 6 mm, there are these adapter collets, which are inserted in place of the original collet. You must be very careful to check that this part is together. This means that you must be able to turn the collet in the union nut. It mustn't fall out. Some customers place the collet directly on the machine and then put the union nut on top. Of course, this is a big mistake, because I won't be able to get this part out again. So always click it into place first, so that the collet is together. And then I can install it. Our large routers are designed in such a way that the collet and the union nut form a single unit, so that they can't be detached in the first place. We fitted everything now. The cutter has been installed. For the next step, we'll adjust the routing depth. I'd like the groove I route to be 8 mm deep. I can use the fine adjusters to set this. Firstly, I'll select the smallest setting on the turret stop. This one here. This stop must be aligned with the metal pin. This will ultimately form the stop. I'll move it up a bit. Then I'll loosen the black clamping screw. I'll push my machine downwards until the cutter comes into contact with the surface. There's a little trick to this. Generally, the workpiece I use here is not the actual workpiece which I'll install in my furniture. I usually carry out the initial routing on a sample workpiece. Always work on a sample workpiece first and not the original one. I now also know that the cutter is level with the plate. I just need to set the fine adjuster to the zero position. To do this, I'll push the slide and the metal rod down. I'll also adjust the scale so it's in the zero position. At the side, it's very clear that the clearance is between 3 mm and 4 mm. 
This means that I can precisely adjust the upper section and adjust the depth to within a tenth of a millimeter. If you notice during the first time routing that it needs to be corrected slightly upwards, I can make a correction of 3 to 4 millimeters. I can adjust the height beforehand by turning the wheel. The total height which I can adjust is 8 millimeters. In other words, I can precisely adjust a total height of 8 millimeters within a tenth of a millimeter. I hope my explanation makes sense. Just give it a go. I think it's quite straightforward. I'll adjust it to the full 8 millimeters. To do this, I'll pull it up. You can see that the small slide moves up too. I'll look for 8 millimeters on my scale. I'll now lock it there. You can see that the distance here and here has been set to 8 millimeters. When I loosen the screw, I can guide it down onto the stop. My cutter now protrudes by 8 millimeters. I can then route my workpiece at a depth of 8 millimeters. That's the second setting done. To move my router in parallel, I also need to fit an attachment. The set version scope of delivery includes a parallel side fence. This is fitted to the OF1010 router using two metal rods. Just slide the fence on. I can now align the router and the fence according to the application. I'm helped by a small marking at the front, which indicates the middle of the router. I'll make a mark on my workpiece. I'll then position the mark on the router at the mark of the workpiece. At the same time, I'll press against the fence so that it's on the workpiece to precisely align the screw. I'll just tighten the screw. I've now set my router to the exact position. As you can see, it's very easy. Of course, I can also use a groove cutter to route a rebate, for example, for a small door. To do this, I can continue to move the router forward, to route a small debate. This means that the groove cutter can also be used as a rebating cutter. We've prepared everything now. We just need to connect the power supply and the extraction system. I'll use the 27mm suction hose and the plug-it cable. Und das Plug-it Kabel. We should ask ourselves where exactly we want to route. How long should the milling groove be? Should the groove extend from the start to the end of the workpiece? I've got another small tip for you. I can make another mark on the side of the workpiece. There's also a small mark on the router here, which indicates the center of the router. For this application, I won't route along the entire workpiece. I'll make a small mark on my workpiece. And I'll only route up to that point. Everything's been set up. Let's get started. You can see how easy it was to route the groove. We stopped exactly at this position. Of course, the groove extends 8 to 9 mm beyond the center, because the cutter is round, otherwise we're exactly at the area of the marking. When routing for the first time, I may notice that the positioning is not quite perfect. 
and I should route slightly more to the left or right. How can I readjust this? I'll move that out of the way for the moment. To readjust, I'll loosen the parallel side fence. I'll then roughly adjust the fence to the left or the right. However, the accessories include a fine adjuster for the parallel side fence, which is fitted like this. These parts are included in the accessories. The screw is fitted here. I'll screw it in about a centimeter. This means that I can finally adjust the same distance outwards and inwards. We'll loosen the two screws at the top. I'll now put the second part into this holder. I'll then push in the metal rods. I'll lock everything using the screws. I can now fit the parallel side fence with the fine adjustment back on the router. Lock it on the side again. It's now very convenient to finally adjust my fence in one direction or the other. I can now adjust the machine to within a tenth of a millimeter in any direction. That was the first step of groove cutting with the small OF1010 router. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd be pleased if you watched our other episodes with the small router. I'm Frank. Thanks for watching. See you next time.